Let's talk positron decay. So we've said that all atoms do decay because they have some kind of a problem about their lives that they want to fix. The atoms that do positron decay are no different. The atoms that do positron decay have this problem here. In their nucleus, they have too many protons and not enough neutrons. So what do they do to fix it? The solution is positron decay. And in positron decay, here's what happens. One of the protons that's in the nucleus of this unhappy atom turns into a neutron. This solves the problem. Now we have fewer protons and we have more neutrons. In the process of this proton turning into a neutron, though, something else happens. A particle called a positron gets created in the process. We haven't talked about positrons yet, and they're pretty interesting. A positron is like the opposite of an electron, okay? It weighs as much as an electron. It is identical to an electron in every way except it's positively charged, okay? So electrons and positrons are kind of like, you know, from comic books, like superheroes and villains. They, they're sort of enemies, and their job, what they try to do is cancel each other out, to annihilate each other. An electron is an example of matter, what we call matter, and a positron, the opposite of that, is an example of what we call antimatter. So electrons and positrons. I hope to do a video on positrons and antimatter and all that sort of stuff because it's really interesting. But for right now, just trust me, all you need to know is that a positron is the opposite of an electron. It's positively charged. The symbol for a positron is very much like the symbol for uh, uh, an electron that shoots out of an atom. We do this beta sign and then a zero, but a plus one here. It's different, of course, because with, if we were doing this a beta sign for an electron, it would be minus one, okay? So, positron decay. Proton turns into a neutron and creates a positively charged electron called a positron in the process, okay? So that's positron decay, and that's how atoms deal when they have this kind of a problem. I want to go through writing nuclear reactions for positron decay. Okay? So, let's say that we have an atom of carbon-11. Whenever I do these decay problems, I write the atoms in what we call isotope notation. We've got the element symbol for carbon here. And then there are two numbers. This number down here is the atomic number, the number of protons in the nucleus. And this number up here is the mass number, which is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. It lets us keep track of these things as they change during decay processes. OK, so we start with carbon-11, and we want to know what happens to it after positron decay. I want to take a look at the number of neutrons and protons that are in this atom. So, Protons is easy. It's the atomic number, the number of protons in the nucleus. How do I get neutrons? Well, the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons, so I can take the atomic number, the number of protons, and subtract it from the neutrons, from, from the mass number, to give me the number of neutrons. So five neutrons, six protons. What's going to happen after positron decay? One of these protons is going to turn into a neutron. So I'm going to have one fewer proton. But since I got a new neutron in the process, my neutron number is going to go up from 5 to 6. Now I want to write the chemical symbol of what I'm going to end up with. And you know what? It's not going to be carbon. It's going to be a new kind of atom. Because the number of protons in an atom determine what kind of atom it is. So here I had six protons, so it was carbon. But now that I have five protons, it's going to be a different kind of element. So how do I find out what symbol I'm going to write here? What i got to do, and what you got to do too, is you've got to go to the periodic table. You've got to look through it, and you've got to find out which element has an atomic number of five. It has five protons in its nucleus. So we pull up our periodic table, take a look at it, and we find that it's boron here. This five is the atomic number. B, boron is the new element that I get when carbon-11 undergoes um, positron decay. So, 
Now I want to fill in my numbers. This is going to be a five here because it's the uh, because it's the atomic number. And now we add the neutrons and protons together to get the mass number. Carbon to, to boron, but don't forget. Now we've got to write the symbol for that positron that shoots out in the process. There are two ways you can do it. Here's a symbol that I like to use. I like to use this beta particle symbol where we do a zero here and then we do a plus one. Some people prefer to use an E, which stands for electron, and they put a zero up here and a plus one here indicating that it has a plus one charge. You can do either one. Find out you know, whether your teacher wants you to do one particular type, but they're both valid ways to write the positron that shoots out of the atom. Let's do another one. This is going to be different because we're going to start out with a mystery element and we're going to have to figure out what that mystery element is. So, we start out with this mystery element and what we end up getting is an atom of argon 38 and a positron shooting out. So, what did I start with? Let's break it down by looking at the number of neutrons and protons that are in argon here. Protons, that's really easy. It's the atomic number. It's 18. How do I find out the neutrons? I do the protons minus, I mean, I do the number of neutrons plus protons minus the number of protons. So I get 20 neutrons. I'll use this information to figure out what I had before the positron decay happened. All right, so I know that in positron decay, a proton turns into a neutron. So that means that before this happened, I had one more proton. That proton turned into a neutron. Since I got a new neutron in the process, I had one fewer neutron to start out. So I had 19, which then became 20. Now I know the number of neutrons and protons. I do the same thing that I did in the previous example. I say what was the atom that I started with before this process occurred? It has a different number of protons and argons, so it's a different element. I go to the periodic table and I find out which of the elements has an atomic number of 19. It turns out that it's potassium, the letter K. So, I write my K up there and now I fill in the numbers. My atomic number is 19, the number of protons, and my mass number up here, the number of protons plus neutrons, I add the two of them together, and I get 38. These last two problems, I did kind of a longhand way. You know, I went out keeping track of the number of neutrons and protons, and it's a way that I definitely recommend you do this when you're first starting out, so you can understand what's actually happening in this positron decay. But it's also useful to be able to do this somewhat quicker by just keeping track of how the mass number and the atomic number change in each one of these decay processes. So let's take a look at what's going on here. What is the change in the mass number before and after positron decay happens? Well, the mass number doesn't change because we lose a proton, but we make a new neutron. And as you can see here, 38 at the beginning, 38 afterwards, zero change in the mass number. Keep in mind the mass number is sometimes abbreviated by a capital A. What happens to the atomic number? Well, since one of the protons turns into a neutron, my atomic number goes down by one. All right? I can use this information about the mass number and the atomic number change to do these equations a little bit faster. So, let's say that I have an atom of oxygen 15, what am I going to end up with after positron decay happens? What's going to happen to my mass number? Absolutely nothing. So it's going to be 15. What's going to happen to the atomic number? It's going to go down one. So the new element that I have is going to have seven protons in its nucleus. What's the letter that I write? I've got to go on the periodic table, say which of these elements has an atomic number of seven. It turns out that it's nitrogen. So I want to put a big N there. And the other thing that I want to do is write the symbol for my positron that shoots out of the atom. You also might want to do the E1 plus if it's what your teacher wants. One more. This is where we're going to start with a mystery element. 
And after this mystery element undergoes positron decay, we get an atom of oxygen 18 as well as obviously a positron. So what did we start with? Since we know that this is the change that takes place in positron decay, I know that the atomic number, since it goes down one, used to be one bigger. So I had eight protons in oxygen. That means that to start with, I had an atom that had nine protons in its nucleus. The mass number didn't change at all, 18. You're probably really used to this by this point, but what's the letter, what's the element symbol that I want to write? I go to the periodic table, which element has an atomic number of nine? And that's fluorine here, big capital F. And this is my equation for uh, the positron decay of fluorine 18. So that's positron decay. So when you're learning this, I recommend that you try to remember two things. And one of them is what actually happens in positron decay, right? Like what's going on in the nucleus. So the idea that a proton is turning into a neutron and you get a positron. Try to remember that. But then also, so that you can do the problems a little bit faster, you can also you know, try to learn or memorize the change that happens in the mass number and the atomic number. If it's possible, totally try to do both. That way you'll understand what's actually going on, and you'll also be able to do the problems fast.